Hello and welcome to Mostly Vintage Cameras. This is a Chinon CE4, a camera that came out in 1980 and offered a remarkably high level of specification at a remarkably competitive price. But weirdly, I don't want to talk about the camera in this video. I have made another video about this which is linked in the description below. But in actual fact, the more observant will have noticed there's a bit of a weird thing on the side here. And if we turn the camera around, we reveal this rather magnificent device on the back. Now as you can see it's a Shinon Infoback DB010 which was also called the Shinon Data Imprinting Unit and in the instructions it says it fits all Series 4 SLR cameras by which I assume it means the CE4 and the CE4S. Now this is a marvellous looking thing I'm sure you'll agree lots and lots of rubberized buttons as I say the, the whole system came out in the 1980 at the same time in fact as things like the Sinclair ZX80 the first sort of home affordable computer that you had to build yourself from a kit so what does this do in fact well it's an info back it prints data or an imprinting unit it prints data on your photographs so let's go ahead and put a battery in here and see how that works so the battery cover is just here now I have to say, it feels a little bit flimsy. You certainly want to be reasonably gentle with this. And this sort of predates the, the high-powered CR2, CR123A batteries. So it runs on a chunky PP3 old-style smoke alarm detector. So that goes in there that goes in there. Now it's worth noting that in two passages in the instruction book it advises or warns that you should make sure that the mode selector switch is in the off position before changing the battery. <coughs> this is the mode selector switch which as you can see is off. So how do we go about imprinting data? Well firstly it's not a data back in the conventional sense. Lots of manufacturers had a, a gadget with what amounted to a digital clock on the back and it would print the date or the time or the date and the time on your photographs. This doesn't do that. There's no automation, there's no clock essentially built into it. With this we can print any message we like up to a point. So let's see how we go about doing that. We move the mode dial to input and we input our message. We get a very satisfying There's O gone, M N O. Um, beep every time you press the button. Hello, Bob. So we've input our message. You might be forgiven for thinking this memo section here is a fold-up screen or a fold-up protector that reveals an LCD screen or something underneath. But you have to remember this is 1980, and if it was sold in 1980, then it was designed in the late 1970s. This predates mobile phones. Uh, certainly if there were any mobile phones around this time, they would have been attached to somebody's car. <coughs> there weren't even loggable portable phones at that time. So we're talking about trying to get something modern and exciting with late 1970s electronics. Anyway, we've input our message. We're going to move that to memory. Sorry, I skipped a chapter there, didn't I? This is just uh, something you write on. So Shinon suggests you spell out or write out your message with a pencil on here so that when you're typing it in, you don't misspell it or you don't miss a character, you don't lose your space. Now this will take up to 30 characters. So you can get a decent length of message on there. And then lastly, we've got this little dial here, ISO 100 and ISO 400. Actually marked as ASA with DIN in brackets. Now I shot a 160 ISO film on here and I chose to expose that at 100. If I was shooting a 200 speed film I'd probably do the same thing. So we've turned it on to input, we've input our message, we've put that into the memory and we've chosen our ISO setting. Now all we need to do is take our photograph and before we wind on press this button on the top here. Can you hear that? So now we can wind on. We'll take another picture and we can print the same message 
on our next picture. And we can do that as often as we wish. What we need to be aware of is the camera and the data imprinting or info back are in no way synchronized. So the taking the picture and the printing the data are two separate activities. So if you take a picture and we print the data and we wind on while we're printing the data, we're going to end up with a, an orange mark down the middle of our pictures. Now, if we want to change the message, we can go back to input or we can turn it off altogether and then go back to input. This doesn't work quite the way, or doesn't seem to work quite the way the instructions say it does. Because it says when you get up to 25 characters, that beep becomes a double beep to warn you that you're at your last five characters. So let's try that. One, two, three, four, five, zero. That's 10. That's 20. So that's 25. So the next one should double beep. Oh, it does. So there we go, it just gives you a warning, you're down to your last five characters, so that's quite nice. And if we were to put that into memory, we just have a string of numbers along the bottom of our photograph. Now before we go any further, it's probably worth considering how this attaches to the camera. As you can see, it sticks out quite a bit from the back of the camera, and when you're using this, it does get in the way of trying to use the viewfinder. I've got to be honest, it's not the most ergonomic device in the world. So when you buy your camera, it has a standard camera back on it. And the info data back printing thing, info back DB010, was sold as a separate accessory. Now the way you would put this on is obviously to remove the standard back. So this isn't bolted onto a standard back, this whole panel comes away. So there's a little lever there. We push that down with our fingernail and the back comes away. And if we look carefully we should just about be able to see there's a, a hinge pin here. Oh, let's put that on camera shall we? There's a hinge pin here and there's a hinge pin on the other side and the one at the top is sprung loaded on this little lever. Now this little lever is incredibly fiddly. Now fortunately you don't use it very often. So that's how you would remove the standard back and obviously you would replace it with this back in the same way or the reverse of that way. So you want to hook the first pin on the eyelet at the bottom. Very fiddly. Now normally I'll say something like I am doing this from behind a video camera so it makes it a lot harder but actually this is just fiddly and difficult, however you do it. You want to be careful not to put your fingers through the shutter curtain while you do this. Ah! Nearly! There we go! So you know when it's in because it engages properly. This little lever in here has a teeny tiny screw head on it. Whatever you do, don't be tempted to unscrew it. It's not meant to be unscrewed. That's just how it's assembled at the factory. So that's pretty much the operation. Now it does have a battery test. In theory you should press this button and this light should come on. Doesn't work on this one. Don't know why, but it doesn't. And just before we look at some pictures, let's put another message in here. H E L L O space spaces are characters by the way you get 30 characters including spaces bob um wish you were here w i oop, no clear i s h h e r e this is arranged a to z alphabetically and not as a QWERTY keyboard, which if you're used to working with a QWERTY keyboard, as I'm sure everybody in 2024 is, it's very annoying. So I'm going to put that into memory. Once it's in memory, it'll stay there for up to four days before the battery dies. So, and you can see here on the pressure plate, there's a, a hole. Now if I turn this main light off and press the imprint button,
Well, that either worked or it won't be in the edit. You tell me. So let's take a look at some pictures. Here's a picture, as you would expect to see a picture. And here's the same picture, or a very similar picture, with a message typed on. Now the message comes out in a colour image in this charming orange text, and I believe it's white on a black and white image. Now one thing you have to remember with this is you take the picture and then you imprint it. You don't get to see the picture before deciding whether you're going to title it or not. So if you do happen to find yourself on a submarine, it is possible to see fish, but they are quite slippery customers. So sometimes you title your photographs and the title isn't always apt for the image. So just worth bearing in mind that when you take a picture you need to be reasonably confident that if you're adding a caption it's appropriate for what you actually took the picture of and not perhaps what you thought you took the picture of. So anyway that's been the Shinon Data Imprinting Unit or InfoBack DB010. Not many people did these. I think Canon did something similar for the T90. I might be wrong. Or possibly the EOS, early EOS cameras. But very few companies have done a, a, an info back or a data back where you could actually type your own message out in effectively longhand. One other thing before I go, I should mention all the text is in uppercase, there is no lowercase option and there is no changing font. You can see from the photographs that the light that makes the image, it's basically seven units tall or seven dots tall. And that's all the uh, choice you get. Anyway, I hope you found this video of interest or use, uh, possibly both. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And do have a good day.